we take you now to our SABC News political editor, Mzwani Lembeje, who's live for us in Nasrek. A very good afternoon to you, Mzwai. What are some of the conversations happening there in Nasrek? Well, a very good uh, is it afternoon. Yes, a very good afternoon to you, um, um, Liz. And of course, uh, it's a very uh, hectic day as we saw that uh, the business of the day of yesterday was actually concluded this morning so it's beginning again and uh, we expect to have another long day as well today because there's still a lot more to discuss but of course we do want to know what is happening inside uh, remember most of the sessions are closed so it basically means we'll have to rely on those updates that they keep giving us but you know we'll always try and get those who we know uh, do have an understanding of what happened of what's happening inside as i'm speaking to you now i'm joined by one of the people who and uh, not so many years ago people would think he would probably be contesting somewhere there but uh, somehow he decided not to the former chairperson of the ANC in Gauteng and of course uh, he was the former premier of this province uh, premier Mbaz Mashilowa. well Many people would, would have thought uh, perhaps this would be your time as your generation that is contesting, but of course we know that you left. We would then want to use the kind of expertise that you have. Right now, we have seen that it is too close to call. What do you think is going through the minds of the two candidates? You know, I, I think that the two candidates, uh, their views would be that they have done anything that they could that their campaigners have done as much as they do that now their fate is in their hands and as you know with any election uh, every vote is secret never mind what people tell you never by, mind the noise in the in the singing never mind how subdued people are when they get into the ballot they make uh, their own uh, decision. So they must be very anxious, but you'll find that if each one of them have been convinced by their own people not to worry, we've got this in the bag, but it may not be. Well, the campaigns um, have been in full swing, I think for the past couple of months now. And of course, uh, we saw that the incumbent currently received the biggest number of nominations and then that led to people thinking it's done and dusted is it, that your view it can never be done and uh, and dusted in fact uh, getting more nominations at the level that he did also galvanizes the other side to say you know we should be worried i mean if you look at the numbers that he received in KZN, and uh, you know where the fewer numbers that um, Zuelim Kize received say in Gauteng and the and the Eastern Cape I don't think it would have said to them all is lost it would have said we need to double our work but I think many some people may have thought like this is uh, done and dusted but it's never done and dusted especially because never mind how the leadership uh, pronounced the fact of the matter is that no province is 100% behind any candidate. They would always be split. Sometimes 90%, uh, 10%, sometimes 50-50 and all of those. Every, every vote count and now we wait to see. I'm sure you were monitoring last night and even the early hours of this morning. Yes. Uh, you saw uh, how things were turning out. When you looked at the faces, particularly of the president, did you see a man uh, perhaps confident he may retain this? I don't know whether you also were able to see uh, Dr. Zulim Kize. So when you read, read their facial expressions, so what did you make of it? I think uh, I read very little in their faces because they are, they are professionals in this game. They know that the uh, uh, cameras will pan towards them so they'll either go pensive or be smiling i think for me you know it was less what was going through their mind it was more what is the strategy at play because i don't think 
any of us outside of each of the two caucuses for so Phoebe and Gwen Ramakupa withdrawing. I don't think anybody for so Tina Jopat Peterson uh, uh, emerging. I don't think we thought that um, Ronald Lamola and Mabuyani would go head to head and or Bejani and the others. So I think for me that is the area to watch that uh, not that they are the same campaign yeah. but I think some of them are closer to one another. I mean uh, you know Ndumsenis people also would prefer um, a CR presidency but I don't know what they think when they find that instead of backing them the CR campaign would have insisted with um, with uh, with Mbalula yeah. you know so so is that perhaps not the reason why the campaign of Zulim Kize is seen to have picked up because the CR slate, slate in inverted commas, appears not to have a firm view on particular individuals. You've, you've pointed it out that people who are supposedly in the same camp are contesting each other, perhaps weakening his slate. Yes and no. I think it, it, it tells you one thing. Yeah. For me, it says that uh, while Mdumiseni and his people may prefer a CR presidency, they have refused to be part of a, a slate. Similarly, I think with, uh, with Ronald. So I think it, it bodes good for them whether they win or lose in the sense that nobody could say their slate uh, lost. What I don't understand though is to an extent that you would assume they think Israelis people have a slate, especially when it comes to Maswale, uh, you know, and so forth. Why could they don't, not be able to work together? And then, of course, the other spinner in the rocks would have been uh, the happenings in, uh, in Limpopo, where some members of the PEC have been uh, working with uh, Israelis people, uh, yet the regional secretaries and half of the PEC would be saying nothing doing. So I think that, you know, strengthens Israelis' campaign we can see as one, but you never know with those people. If obviously these are people working for the same company, well, which is the ANC, so in terms of the prospects for the future now, yes. uh, because we may speak about ANC politics, yes. but at the end of the day, it's about the future of the country because this is the governing party. So, will there be any different in terms of the direction should? Let's say a Israeli presidents image image because I think we have an idea of a Ramaphosa presidency. It's uh, six and half dozen of the of the other. You know, all of them will always say to you, "I will go by ANC policies." So um, I don't think there'll be many many changes. What for me would be the worry, and this worry happens whether it is really or whether it's a uh, Cyril Ramaphosa. It does not seem that they, they live in the same world in which we are. Not, none of them are saying we lost key metros, we may lose key metros, and that therefore let's focus on the people rather than on ourselves and the party. None of them, you know, say unemployment is very high. It's a slogan that they all use, but none of them can say this is what we are going to be able to do. Um, and they're going to take the same resolutions that the ANC have been taking from even when I was there. You know, you can go 97, 2002, 2007. You'll find the resolutions are more or less. There's no pause that says we have taken this resolution before. We have not implemented it. There must be reason we have not implemented it. We should ditch it. We should change things around, or we should find uh, new ways. For me, that's where they are. It will be a hollow victory for each one of them if they win here, but then 2024 lead uh, the opposition or lead at least a coalition uh, government. 
What do you make of Paul Mashatile's uh, uh, campaign? Um, he does seem to be the one who may actually be the biggest beneficiary when all is said and done beyond this. I think his people would have made a calculation that uh, you don't aim at the king unless you, you are sure of your, of your strength. But that, uh, you know, with both Zueli and uh, Ramaphosa in a situation in which digital vibes and or Palapala can trip them, he would be in a pound seat. So basically, his people or his campaign really calculated well uh, going into this. Yes, but it may also be the same calculation that Cyril's campaign is making with Mabuyani and or what Ronald's people may also be making. Well, uh, well moving towards closure, don't you miss to be inside? You are a politician through and through, and I'm told once a politician, always a politician. No, I mean, uh, I miss uh, uh, politics, but party politics, uh, no. And in fact, when I look at what is, uh, is happening, you know, I say to myself, I don't miss it. I mean, I'll give you one example. Yeah. I don't see how Cyril Ramaphosa could be talking renewal and then have Tina Jomad Peterson, someone who, you know, swindled the country of our oil barrels, pretended they have not been sold, yet he's talking a, a renewal. Similarly, with Zuelim Kizis people, leave the Zueli aside because both him and Cyril are compromised. Similarly with, um, you know, Mama Action and all of that. And I know sometimes people focus only on Nomvula because of Musasa, but one should equally be looking at, um, at Jonathan Peterson. So for me, that says, you know, sometimes the more things change, the more they remain the same. It may be that President Zuma was more forthright. These ones are more subtle, but uh, no, no change. You know, I'm, I'm asking this because uh, you would know at some point you were touted as a possible future deputy president, but that was back then. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm asking this question. Yeah, no, no, no. But, you know, uh, <laughs> I think that what most people don't know is that even if I didn't leave the ANC or if COPE didn't happen, yeah. my plan was always to retire from active politics and government when I reached 50. Oh, wow. Yes. Because I get into the unions when I was like 28. So, you know, I mean, I see most of those people there. Uh, I mean, if Mandachi were to emerge now, by the time he leaves, he would have been 20 years in leadership of the ANC. He can't bring in anything new. Absolutely nothing. Oh, that is Mbazima Shiloa for you. Um, the former premier of Gauteng and the former chairperson of the ANC and of course a person very well known uh, in the struggle as I've said to him at some point uh, there were talks that he could be actually a future president but uh, he chickened out he said at 50 he can't take it anymore and <laughs> the lady I'm sure you're waiting that side as well